I'm going to teach you how to make amazing animations in Camtasia 9. It's all about behaviors, and it's just a click away. Hey, it's Gord here. Nice to see you again. If it's your first time here and you want to make great videos more quickly and want to become a ninja at video editing, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below because that's what this channel's all about and you won't want to miss a thing. Let's dive in now. With Camtasia 9 came the introduction of Behaviors, a group of preset animation effects that exhibit motion graphic behavior that is much more sophisticated and visually stunning than the more basic existing animations. The best part is that you can create these animation effects with just a few clicks. These behaviors can be applied to text, images, and video. With text, these animations can be applied at the character level. This kind of motion graphics capability was formerly only achieved through tools like After Effects. So now, the Camtasia user has a much more powerful motion graphics arsenal. The existing animation types, based on keyframes, can be combined with behaviors to create an even more advanced motion graphics effect. Now let's quickly look at the basics on creating and maintaining a behavior before we dive a little deeper into behavior tuning. The behavior tool is located on the left hand side of the canvas and can also be accessed via the shortcut letter O. As you can see there are nine behaviors. Each behavior has a visual representation that plays when you hover over its location. If you want to see what the full behavior looks like then leave the mouse hover over it to play through its motion cycle. These visual representations are based on a text application of the behavior. Please note that it is quite hard to get a true feel for how the behavior looks without applying it to a clip and observing it play on the canvas. To apply a behavior, you can simply drag it onto a visual clip on the timeline or directly onto a visual clip on the canvas. You can even apply it to a clip in a group. Just drag the behavior on top of the group and it will open up to reveal the eligible clips. Please note that you can't apply a behavior to an audio clip. These behaviors are considered presets because the animation executes in a certain designed way and its execution goes through three phases of motion, in, duration, and out. Each of these phases have parameters that can be tuned to further customize a given behavior. We'll be looking at some examples more closely. The management of behavior properties is totally separate from the management of other visual properties and animations that you can set, which all existed before Camtasia 9. Also, in working with a behavior, you may decide that you want to reset it to its default behavior. To do that, just click on the reset button. You can reset the whole behavior or a specific parameter in any specific phase. Of course, the reset button only shows if you changed the default settings. Behavior effects can also be selectively copied from one clip to another. This is done by highlighting the behavior effect in the list shown in the clip on the timeline and then selecting the right mouse button, Copy Selected Effects option. You can also select multiple effects at once to copy. To paste the effect, just go to another clip and once you have context for the clip, select the right mouse button option to paste selected effects. Please note that if you are copying a behavior effect from one clip to a target clip where the effect may already exist, the receiving clip property settings will get overwritten. You can also copy and paste all effects at once from one clip to another, not just the selected effects. The target can also be multiple clips. This is done by just using the right mouse button, copy effects, and paste effects options. Okay, now that we've gone through how to create and do a little maintenance, let's take a closer look. Let's take a look at the jump and fall behavior applied to an annotation callout text to show some of the awesomeness of behaviors. First, I set this image clip to be about 12 seconds long so that you can see the details of how the animation motion ex executes through the in, during, and out sequences. As I run the clip, you can clearly see the bounce in, the jump, and the drop styles all execute one after the other through their respective phases or sequences of in, during, and out. However, if I don't touch any of the parameters and I just shorten the clip to about 5 seconds, you will notice that there is no during sequence visible 
where the text is supposed to jump in a looping fashion. The length of the clip, the amount of text, and other parameter settings will all have a big impact on how the resulting motion will look. To get the desired effect you want, you will likely need to tune things beyond the defaults. For example, if I just change the type from text to object for the in sequence, you will see that the bounce in is fast and now we have several loops of the jumping characters as the duration sequence not only runs, but it is time to loop before the out sequence runs. Since I want something not so jumpy and active in the during sequence, I will change the style to reveal and see what happens. Notice that when I change to the reveal style, the movement and opacity parameters appeared and the jump parameter disappeared and text left to right changed to text random. Let's set the text back to text left to right and then change movement to smooth and also do updates to loop, offset and delay. I want to set the loop to 1.30 seconds per reveal loop, which is a little tighter and shorter. I also want to change the offset to 0.05 seconds between character animations, which is also a little quicker. And finally, I want to set the delay to zero so that there's no wait time between the loops. As you can see, the original jump and fall behavior is significantly modified, giving it a whole different look and feel. So, keep in mind that there's so much creative latitude here and that you will find yourself often playing with many parameters and the length of the clip to find an aesthetically pleasing result. As you could see with the last example, we were only making modifications to the parameters for one behavior, jump and fall. You could see that each of the in, during, and out sequences have their own set of configurable parameters. I encourage you to explore and play with many of the other behaviors and their related parameters, some of which are context sensitive, meaning that some parameters are only visible when relevant. A few of these additional key parameters to play with include the direction and movement parameters. The direction parameter can be set to change the direction from which your in and out sequences move to address the entry and exit of a given behavior. Also play with movement, another parameter with many choices that affect the speed or flow of the animation sequence as it executes. Aside from just changing the specific behavior parameters, you can also stack behaviors. In addition to stacking, as always, you can also add animations and transitions. Let's look at an example where we build from an image with no behaviors applied, and then we add two behaviors and additional keyframe animation elements to make a more sophisticated motion graphic animation. First, you see the image with no behaviors, just a fade in out transition. Next, you'll see the image with the jump and fall behavior. As you can see, there's a bouncing in followed by a jumping in the middle and then a drop to exit. Of course, you could tune the parameters in each sequence here more to your liking, but we are leaving the parameters with their default values for this example. Next, you see the image with two behaviors in play. We stacked or added the scale behavior to the jump and fall behavior. You can see how the bounce in kind of does a zoom in before fading back. The scale behavior has none for the style in the duration sequence, and so there is no added effect in this sequence, but the out sequence, it does a shrink effect with an ease out movement, all the while doing the drop as per the jump and fall out sequence behavior. Hey, I got one more cool thing to show you about behaviors, but before I go there, if you want to discover how to make great videos from home, if you want to learn about dialing in your video shooting setup, if you want to learn about video cameras, audio, and lighting, then make sure to grab my Better Videos From Home free guide by clicking on the YouTube card displayed above. Now, in the last image, we made a few enhancements. First, we change the duration sequence style in the jump and fall to be pulsating instead of jump. As you can see, it also changed other parameter values like delay, which got decreased to zero. Next, we added in two additional custom animations, as you can see by the animation keyframe arrows on the timeline. These animations were added to set the location of the image at the start of the behavior execution to be in the top left corner and then move later in the time path to the bottom right before dropping off the canvas. Please note 
that if you change the duration or length of the clip, the behaviors dynamically adjust, but you will have to manually update the animation keyframes if desired. So, behaviors are very cool and present so much motion graphic potential for the Camtasia creator. In a future video, I will share more examples and techniques to help you discover and create even more awesome stuff with Camtasia. Wow, those behaviors are like animations on steroids. Thank you so much for watching. I love creating these videos on Camtasia and how to make better videos. If you want to learn all the secret tips and you want to discover how to make great videos fast, make sure to click the icon below and subscribe and you won't miss a thing. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.